Hello everybody and welcome to part three of the SketchUp series, which is a part of the free online woodworking school. In this video, we're going to get started on making the basic carcass of a shaker table so that we can begin adding things like a drawer, colours and other fine details in later episodes. Let's get going. Okay, so just a quick reminder before we get stuck into any of this. I am not a professional at this whatsoever. I have just been using this for well over a decade and this is a workflow that has worked for me over that time and I wanna share it with you now. So by the end of the video, we are aiming to get something like this. Obviously, this is just a basic shaker table, four legs. These will be mortars and tenoned into the legs and we've got a cavity here that will fit a drawer eventually. Now this drawer is gonna have lapped dovetails on the front, it's gonna have through dovetails on the back, obviously gonna have a base slid into it and everything. It's gonna be a properly traditional constructed drawer. So there's a lot of details in it and it's actually quite a tricky one to draw. Now this model at the moment doesn't have any joinery on it whatsoever. If I was just to delete one of these legs, you can see these are all square sections. We will be adding a tenon to these stretchers and we'll be adding a little dovetail to this top rail here and a little tenon to the bottom rail here as well. Now to make this a little bit easier for yourself, I have provided free plans for you to follow while constructing this. There'll be a link to that in the description. It'll take you to my store. You'll see the price is zero and you can download them as a PDF and then print them off to have sat next to you on the desk. This will be useful to have because although I'm gonna be giving the dimensions on here, it's gonna be tricky for you to follow what you can see written in the bottom corner and you know what I'm saying verbally as well. It'll be far easier if it's just plonked there next to you on the table and you can follow those dimensions and just start extruding things from there and adding the final details at a later stage. So we're starting fresh with this, fresh model. There's our lovely lady back again. Now, although it seems quite pointless having that person there, by the way, it's actually quite useful to start with because if you get rid of them, then we have nothing really to gauge like this square against, you know, how big actually is that square? Of course, we could look at the dimensions in the bottom, but if you've got that mod, where is it? Oh, <laughs> right, that goes to demonstrate it. She was all the way down there. If you've got the model there, you can easily see how big it is in relation to your standard human. So we'll keep her there just for the time being. To start with, we are going to construct the legs. And for this, on the bottom, they are 30 millimeters square and 500 millimeters tall. So for this, we're gonna get the old rectangle tool and we're going to draw a square with the rectangle tool. Now for this, you can see the dimensions in the bottom right are represented by a dimension, comma, and another dimension. And you can write that in manually. We want these to be 30 millimeters square, so we do 30, comma, 30. You don't need any spaces. Press enter, and that will give us a little square here. We then get our extrude tool and we're going to bring that up just a little bit and then type in 500 to the distance and press enter. Now, if we look at the previous model, you'll see that these legs are lightly tapered and this taper is on the inside edges, both looking from the side and the front as well. And so we need to add that taper to these ones. Now the taper starts 110 millimeters down from the top. And so to do this, we're simply gonna get the old pen tool. We're gonna start in the corner here and we are going to click and draw a line at 110, enter. Now, it's hard to see where the end of that line is, but you can see that that little dot turns green whenever we reach an edge. So it's blue when it's in the center, green when it hits a corner of some kind, and then red when it's just resting on a corner somewhere. So we're gonna drag this down until we see that line. So there's the midpoint of that line that I've just drawn. We'll keep going down, and there's the green one there. Now, of course, you could do this with the tape measure. There'll be other tools in there that you could do the same thing with. I just do it with a pen so that I don't have to constantly swap between tools. So we're at 110 there, and we can confirm that if we want by dragging it back up and checking that measurement in the bottom right, which is 110. So we're gonna drag that round this side, and we're going to drag it round here as well. Okay, and now let's get rid of this lady because we've got some sizes to work off now. Okay, so the foot of this leg is actually 20 millimeters square. So in total, that would mean the leg tapers from 30 down to 20. But remember, it's only the two internal faces that are tapered, meaning that this square is going to be bias, I suppose, or it's gonna be flush with the two outside faces of the leg. So again, for reference, there's our two internal faces. Let's spin this round. There is our exterior faces. On the foot down here, we're gonna start on this outside corner and we're going to measure across 
20 millimeters and do enter. So that's given us an end point. There it is. Let's do the same on here. You could of course do this with the square tool on the underside of the leg. I just thought I'd do it this way for demonstration purposes. And then with that end point, we're gonna click on that and we are going to connect that to the taper here. Now we could do the same on the other one if we do that and then connect it up to here. However, you're gonna get a little bit of weird behavior when it comes to push pulling these away. So if we push that taper away, happy days, it gets rid of it. However, with this side, when it comes to push pulling it away, the push pull tool will only get rid of a facet if it kind of ends flush with the other face. Whereas because that second face is now angled because we pushed it away originally, when the second one comes in, it doesn't actually get rid of the entire thing. It's a little bit weird. You eventually get used to it, but obviously this way is not going to work. So we'll get it so we've only got the taper on one of these external faces. Let's now view it from underneath and we're gonna get the follow me tool and get it to follow it round that corner. And there we go. Just get rid of this little bit here. And that has left us with one leg that is now tapered on two faces, as you can see there, and flat on the exterior faces. So I wanted to quickly chuck that one in there because that's a quick example of how you could use the follow me tool to create a tapered edge. There was actually a quicker way of doing this. I'll show you it real quick. So I've got rid of the tapers and now we're only left with these two lines on the internal faces. What we could do is get the move tool instead, select the edge down here. Let's get it right in the middle and just push that back 10 millimeters and push that in 10 millimeters. So that has now created a 20 millimeter square section, 30 take away 10 and has folded it around that line that we put on there. So. That would be the quicker way of creating the taper, but obviously the follow me tool would work as well. I'm showing you this because, you know, as with woodwork, there are so many ways to do the same task. And I am very much aware that there will be professionals of SketchUp watching this just to try and pick me on certain things saying, you could do this quicker. You could. My way may not be the most efficient, but it's the most fun. So now we've got that leg. The first thing we are going to do every time we create a new component is we are going to name it as a component because at the moment, if we click on this, it just selects individual faces and individual edges like that. So we want to make sure this is one component and it all moves in unison. And there'll be various other benefits to that that you'll see later on as well. So to do that, we'll get the select tool, highlight the entire thing, right click on it and do make component. It comes up with this lovely window here and we just type in leg. You can also put in a description if you want to. This probably won't be too applicable for this, but with larger complicated models where, you know, you've got lots of different components, some of which will be very similar to one another, then it'll be very useful to put a description in there to sort of differentiate between those different components. I'm not entirely sure where it is on this interface, but with SketchUp Pro, after you've completed the model, you can get a list of all the components and you can just click through them and it will highlight that component. And so that might be a point where the description will be useful. You've also got these glue to things. I wouldn't really worry about those. And you've got this thing here, always face camera. For example, let's say you drew a room of some kind and you wanted to decorate it. You could, like, you could draw a flower pot in 2D. And so when you rotate around the room, that 2D image is always facing you and it always looks as if it's 3D, but actually it's not. Another example might be, you know, if you download people or something like that, just to fill out a render, it's quite useful if those are always facing you so that you don't see any 2D or very thin looking people. <laughs> Mainly for decoration, there will be other uses as well, but don't really bother with that one. We'll just stick with none. And there we go. So that has highlighted it in this blue box. And you'll see that this box doesn't hug the edges of the component. It actually sticks out a little bit just so that it's flush with all the largest edges of that component. So that's cool, we've got one leg. Obviously we'll need four of these, but we haven't quite worked out that distance between them yet, so let's not bother with that yet. We're gonna begin making the stretchers next. So let's get our rectangle tool. The stretchers are 200 millimeters long and 18 millimeters thick. So let's go 200 comma 18. Oh, okay, it's drawn it that way, thank you. And then we'll just get our push-pull tool and they are going to be 100 millimeters tall. First thing we do with that is we highlight it and create a component from it. So this is stretcher. Okay. And we're going to rotate this to get it into position against the leg. So for that, click the component, get the old rotate tool here. And we're going to get it on the blue axis to start with so that we can spin it around this way. Uh, of course, we'll just type in 90 because it makes it easier. And then we're going to get the move tool. And we're going to pick a corner like this and get it flush with that corner. 
there. Now on the final model, you'll see that we've actually got these little steps here, adds a nice little detail to it. And that step is five millimeters. So let's get this, move it across that way. Make sure it's on the red axis when you do this or on the green axis. It depends which way you've oriented your model. As long as it is on one of those axes and you're not dragging it out here into the abyss somewhere. So we'll make sure it's on the red axis and then we'll do five. Now we can get another leg and you can just do control copy for this. And there's another one. Obviously we're gonna to need to rotate this 90 degrees in order to keep those tapers on the inside edge. We'll get that flush with here and then to create that step we'll just drag it out another five millimeters you'll find it with sketchup that it will memorize your previous um, numerical value that you gave it and so here it's automatically snapping to five millimeters you can see it in the bottom corner there it's quite useful so i can just click it there and it sort of it guessed what i was going to do for me which is very clever now we're going to do the back one click on that copy paste and then we will rotate that round as well up into position there and then drag it in five millimeters. Thank you, snapping. And now to do the other side, we're just gonna copy these three components and then bring them around to the other side. And remember the highlighting tool for this. If you drag it from right to left and you highlight the components, it's also going to grab this one because part of that component was within that boundary. Whereas if we drag it from left to right, it's only gonna get the components that were entirely within that box. And of course you have got other things like you can hold down shift and you can select the components individually. Again, loads of different ways of doing it. Spin that entire assembly round 180 degrees and move it into position. So let's just create that step on the back. So there we go, there's four legs and three stretchers all joining them together or oh, not quite joined because we haven't drawn any tenons yet but that's the uh that's the majority of the carcass done now let's get focusing on the two front rails so from this point i like drawing everything in situ just makes it a bit easier so we're going to start here these front rails are flush with the internal faces and they're going to come out to be five millimeters shy of the front face again so in this case the length is telling me 30 let's do it 25 there and i'm just using the line tool for this and there we go, that's given us one box on top there. And we are going to extrude this down. And this is going to be 15 millimeters thick. Now that we've got that, let's highlight it. So again, I can safely highlight this entire thing by dragging from left to right, because that is the only thing that's within that bounding box. And we're going to do make component. This is going to be top rail. Now next we need to get another rail down here Bear in mind that this taper doesn't start flush with the bottom of the stretchers. This is actually something quite common that you do in furniture because if you were to get that taper right up against the bottom of the stretcher, let's say you slightly overdid that taper, you're then gonna get a little gap at the bottom. So quite often you leave a little flat spot like you've done here. And then, you know, you can blend that in afterwards with sandpaper or something if you want, but that's quite a common thing you do with um, tapered legs. But anyway, we need to get another one of these down here to be flush with that. What I would do at this point is probably get the old tape measure and snap on the back leg like this where the stretcher joins with it, drag it forward, give myself a little line there, and then we'll come down from the top as well, drag that down. And there we go. That's given us a pair of crosshairs that will allow us to keep it in line with this top one and in line with the bottom of the stretcher. So let's just control copy that. Now, sometimes you've got to place the object and then re-pick it up using that corner as the snap. So we'll pick it up from there now and get it here. Click away from that, get the erase tool and let's delete those construction lines that we made. For some reason, I can't get that one it's not rubbing away so what i'll do instead is just try highlight it there are you there we go now what's important to note here is every time i've copied a component it has literally made a duplicate of that component to the extent that if i was to change one of them it will change all the other ones at the same time for example let me show you on this top stretcher if i was to edit that component and i was to get the push pull tool and drag it up you can see that it also does the same to the bottom one as well, which we don't want because on this top component, this is going to be dovetailed into the rail here. This bottom one is gonna have a tenon on it. And so when I'm drawing the dovetail on here, I don't want it drawing a dovetail on that one below automatically. What we need to do instead is make that component unique. So with the bottom component, I'm gonna right click that and just do make unique. Now, if we look 
at the entity info, which is where we'll be able to see the name of the component, you can see that it's called top rail hash one. Whereas if we were to look at the original one, it is just called top rail. So it's, it's given it the same name. It's just put a version, should we say, afterwards. Now we can rename that because obviously it's no longer the top rail. It is the bottom rail and we'll get rid of that. And now we can test it. If we do edit component and I drag up on here, you can see that it's no longer adjusting that bottom one. And so I quite often do that. I will make one component, copy it around a piece and then make them unique as we go. In the case of this, with those four legs, the back two legs are gonna have two mortises on them because they've got two stretches joining it. The front leg only has one mortise coming in from the back from that large stretcher, and then it's got a little one from there. So what we're gonna have to do is make those two back legs unique, and we're gonna have to make the two front legs unique as well. And in fact, we might not even be able to group them that broadly. We may have to make them all unique, so it's front right, front left, back left, back right. So next we need to put some sort of draw slides in here, because if we were to put a draw in there now, it's just gonna fall out the bottom of the table, which we do not want. So let's get some sort of draw runner going on in here. Again, I'm just gonna use the pen tool for this. It'll make it really easy to do so. Let's start here, shall we? So it's gonna start on this corner, go across. It's snapping onto the red axis, green axis. And then let's bring it across, uh, let's say 15 millimeters. Then we're gonna follow it across from the green axis. See where that intersects on here, there. Spin the camera around a little bit. Get it into there, bring it back across here. And there we go, it's created a bounding component. And we'll get the push-pull tool. And you know we can bring it up like this and type in, what was it, 15? Or you can just drag the push-pull tool over here and it will automatically make those levels equal. It's a really quick way of doing it. So we'll do that. Then we're gonna highlight that component. So I'll do a highlight from left to right because that should be the only thing within that bounding area. Again, going from this way, look at everything it's gonna pick up. So it's pretty pointless. We'll do it from this way. There we go. Make component, we're gonna call this draw runner. And then we probably need one at the top as well. So let's just control copy that, find some sort of area that we could snap it to. So it'll probably be this corner here and get that up into there. There we go. And then the other thing we need to do is fill out this area to the side of the drawer because this is no longer gonna go in and drop down, but it might go in and fall into the side of it there. So we need something kind of packing out that area. So again, probably just get the pen tool to do this. Let's just go from that corner up 15 millimeters across to whatever that is down and then there. And then we'll just drag that out to fill out that area. And again, I can just sort of lock that onto that edge and it will automatically make it the right length. Get our select tool, make sure that's the only thing within that bounding box. There we go. And we are going to call that draw side runner. There you go. Now, instead of doing that all again on the right hand side, we're just gonna copy and paste it across. What will make this easier is if you make all three of those components one component together. You can also group them, but I don't tend to do a lot of grouping on this. I just usually make everything into a component and that's it. So I'm gonna hold shift while doing this. We'll click that one, click that one, and we'll click that top one there. We're gonna group three of these components into one component together. And we are gonna call this draw runner and that's quite important as well. It obviously doesn't let you give two components the same name. So we're gonna call this draw runner assembly uh, left. And it's important we do that. You'll see why in a second. So let's take that assembly, copy paste it. Now if I just plonk it up on here for now, so we can easily see it. Now with this, we've got the cutout on the back here. And so if I was to spin this round 180 degrees on the blue axis, let's just do that, 180, you can see that Yes, it is now oriented to be on the right-hand side, but this cutout is no longer at the back there. So instead, let's just undo that. We are going to need to flip it around on whatever axis this is, the green one in this case. And that's only green because it's the way that I've oriented my table. It might end up being the red for yours. So we'll do it that way. Get a corner that we can snap onto. So let's get our move tool. I'd imagine that internal corner there will be quite a nice one. And let's get it on there. Sorted, kind of, because now if we look in here, you can see that we have got one side runner on the bottom and we've got one side runner on the top there. Now you might think this is an easy fix. What we'll do is just go edit component. We'll highlight that one and then we'll drag it down. But look what that does to the other side. 
it drags it up, <laughs> which is incredibly useful. So what we need to do with this, as you'd probably expect, is click on the assembly, right click it, make unique, and then we'll change the entity info of that. So obviously that has now created a version of the draw runner assembly on the left, but it's no longer the left. This is now the right. So let's get rid of all that. That's now draw runner assembly right. Edit the component once again, and we'll just drag this down to where it should be. Sorted. All right, so that looks pretty good in there. The only thing we need to do now is add a top to the table. And this is just gonna be a square top with a nice little chamfer around the bottom. So we're gonna get the old rectangle square tool thing, start it in one corner, and the top is gonna be 300 millimeters square. So 300 comma 300, boff. And then we're gonna extrude that 18 millimeters thick, 18. And we are going to put a chamfer on the bottom. Now with this chamfer, it is not going to an absolute point on the top. There's gonna to be a little flat spot and then the chamfer afterwards. And so uh, there's a few different ways you could lay it out to start with. The way I tend to do things like this is I get the circle tool and I draw a circle out. Now this is 18 millimeters thick. Obviously we want it to be about a five millimeter flat spot. So let's take that down to 13. That's a 13 millimeter radius there. And we're just going to connect those together like that and erase that. And there we go. That's given us the size of the chamfer. Nice and simple. What we're gonna do from here is get the old follow me tool again. Look at it from underneath and just go follow. And we're just dragging it around all four of these edges. Connect it back up to that corner. And there we go. A lovely chamfer detail on the underside of that tabletop. Now, by the way, if I just undo this, you could, if you wanted, get rid of this and you could do a curved one. Look, we just did that, drag that around instead. There we go. So we've got a curved detail there instead. And so this is the advantage of the follow me tool. I could make that a really, really complicated profile and just drag it around and it will copy it on all four edges. And even better, look, it even miters the edges for you because that's the most efficient way of it getting around that corner. So the programs to site must be a miter, but I much prefer the old chamfer. So I'm going to do that instead. Lovely. Then we'll highlight that. And that is obviously going to become the top. And now obviously we need to get the top centralized on the top of the carcass. And you could just drag that on there and do a little bit of math and work out what the offset would be either side. You could probably use the drawings that will be provided with this. But if you're lazy like me, you could just double click on the component to begin editing it. You could give yourself some sort of crosshairs to find you the center of the component. Do the same up here. Just get the old pen tool and do it. There we go. In fact, we only really need one line because it'll automatically find the midpoint of that line anyway. Get the old top, move tool, highlight that. There's my line there. And it's just gonna find the midpoint there. Click on that. And then if we go underneath, we can get rid of that first line from the table, edit the component, and let's just get rid of these lines as well. So that is one shaker table carcass complete. So that pretty much summarizes it for this video. But before you go, I wanted to highlight the important lesson of this episode, which is making components. I'll show you what happens if you don't do that and how it can cause issues later down the line. So because we've got components at the moment, obviously we can click on legs and we can click on stretches and we can click on the tops and all that. And it's nice and easy. If we wanted to move that leg away, we just get the move tool and we move it out like that absolutely fine. However, if this wasn't components and these were just all lines that I drew, they would all be stuck together. And so to show you what that looks like, what I'm going to do is just explode everything here. So that's exploded most things. However, these internal draw runners still need further exploding because remember we made them into a second component afterwards. And so what I tend to do for just stuff like that is I highlight the entire component again and just explode it again. Now everything here is an individual line and face. So if I wanted to move that leg out, if I click on that and I get the old move tool, look what it does. Uh, maybe I wanted to move the top away or something like that. Well, hey, where are you going, mate? You know, without components, it is gonna be a nightmare to start drawing out any of this joinery on these stretches because, you know, I wanna be able to move that top out the way in order to get access to it. And now I've got to kind of highlight it like this and move it across, but then even then, it's still glued to the top of the table. So I'll move it up like that. And you can't actually move it to the sides because there's something binding it from doing so. 
and yeah everything is just kind of glued together at this point because they are not individual components so if you take anything from this lesson make sure to use components and make sure to make those components unique as well because when we start adapting things on here you don't want it changing other areas of the model while you're not watching because that is a pain when that happens and you've got to backtrack everything in order to get to the point to make that component unique before repeating the work that you just did so yeah make components make everything unique and make sure that you name everything uniformly as well so that it's nice and easy to figure out i'm going to wrap up this video there thank you very much for watching if you found it useful please do not forget to press the like button subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to download the free plans for this project in the description below i'll see you in the next video